Hey everyone, and welcome to Travel Through Stories. My name is Sean, and today I want to talk about Siri Ranvay Hjelm Jakobsen's novel, Island, translated from the Danish by Carolyn Waite and published by Pushkin Press. Jakobsen is a Faroese Danish author, and this book came out just a few months ago, and I was immediately drawn to it because I've always been interested in the Faroe Islands, sort of by way of my interest in Iceland and Old Norse, as the Faroe Islands are very much a part of that North Sea realm in the Middle Ages that include you know, mainland Scandinavia, Iceland, Greenland, the Hebrides, parts of Scotland and Ireland, and the Faroe Islands. Further, I just have a fondness for small islands, especially in the far north, because they're just so resistant to human uh, habitation. And I just find this paradox between this harsh, uninhabitable, almost uninhabitable, natural world in which these, these artists live, and then the beautiful art that they create out of it. This is something that is especially true of Iceland, as many of my favorite authors, my favorite modern authors, come from Iceland. And in fact, one of the main reasons that really made me pick up this book is that on the cover of this book, we have a quick little blurb from Jung Kamen Stefansson, one of my favorite Icelandic authors, but one of my favorite authors, period, who just calls this work beautiful. And let me actually just read out his full quote, because I think it's it captures a lot of my feelings towards Island. He writes, If somebody asked me what is the strength of this novel, I would reply without a moment of hesitation. The tone, the atmosphere, and then I would immediately add the style. The sentences which seep through the soil and never leave. Siri Ranvahjelm Jakobsen captures what is vague and incomprehensible, breathes through the words, the characters, and the generations. And she also captures what is most beautiful and painful, the regret in time. And Island is just that. It's a beautiful novel that, just like Jon Kalman's own work in Iceland uh, does, it explores this paradox of this harsh natural landscape and the strength and the beauty of the connections between the people who live on those harsh landscapes. Island takes place over three generations and it moves fluidly between these different time frames. The first time frame follows a young woman named Marita, who is emigrating from the Faroe Islands to Denmark. And the other main storyline follows Marita's granddaughter, who is unnamed, but who is um, in the first person, who two generations later is making a similar trip, only this time moving from the mainland in Denmark back to the Faroe Islands to visit, after living on the mainland in Denmark for her entire life. And these two storylines, these two journeys, sort of just melt together. Uh, as we begin hearing all of these stories about this family and we keep jumping back and forth between these family members, we learn about Marita both from her own perspective and from her granddaughter's perspective. So it really creates these very well-rounded characters as, as we see them from all these different angles. And like most good family histories do, it sort of creates a harmony between generations. And the characters are all interesting, but what really drives this book, what really holds this book together for me is the beauty of the language, the atmosphere that it creates, and just the, the power of, of the language itself. Let me actually just read the opening couple of sentences. She stands with her back to the low copse of planted trees, looking down the mountain to the village, blue in the August light, and the sheep that are like stones among unbroken grass. Further off, the sea is sleeping, Vaugsfjord is still, blue on blue against the sky, above the ruler-straight horizon, strung taut between the headlands, a line only ghosts and legends can walk. And I just love that line about the line that only ghosts and, and legends can walk, that sort of horizon line that blends together from the blue on blue. It actually really reminds me of one of the, one of the lines that for some reason has always stuck with me um, from Rimbaud's the Se uh, A Season in Hell in which he writes about this same, it's a little bit different, but the, this same uh, image of, of a sun setting, where he writes, Elle est retouvée, quoi, la trinité, c'est la mer mêlée au soleil. It is recovered, what? Eternity. It is the sea mixed with the sun. The, this line between sun and sea being this, this line of eternity is very similar um, to, to the opening of, of Island, where this line between the blue of the sea and the blue of the sky is this, this line that ghosts and legends walk. But anyways, it's really 
poetic. And this book is really just embedded in the natural world. And it's really a, a love letter to the Faroe Islands themselves. Both the physical islands and the, you know, the culture of the islands as well. But the major tension of this novel, as I'm sure you can already begin to see, is this tension between the, the culture of the Faroe Islands and the culture of mainland Denmark. The rural and rustic islands out in the North Sea and the cultured center of, of, of Copenhagen and of mainland Denmark. The periphery and the center. And if you don't know, I mean, the, the Faroe Islands have their own language, um, their own culture, obviously, um, but they are still, to this day, a territory of the Kingdom of, of Denmark. They're sort of autonomous, but like Greenland, they're still owned by Denmark. And so there is this disconnect for Marita's granddaughter, the first person narrator of half of this book, as she feels like she is Faroese and she identifies as Faroese because, well, her whole family is from there, but she's never lived on the Faroe Islands. She's lived in Copenhagen her entire life. It seems to be a very similar sort of feeling that a lot of second and third generation immigrants feel, that they're both both and neither, right? This idea comes up a lot in, um, in Chicano literature, for one, right? Read anything by Gloria Anzaldúa um, for the, this feeling. And indeed, the unnamed narrator of Island is really embarrassed when she goes back to the Faroe Islands because she doesn't speak Faroese. And not only does she not speak Faroese, but she can't even make the phonetic sounds to mimic the language at all. That is, not only is there something culturally different about her, as she can't speak or understand the language, but there's something physically different about her as well, as her tongue and her vocal cords can't even make the sounds to even mimic the language itself. And she thinks about this a lot. At one point, she's speaking to her aunt and uncle, who are islanders, um, and they're kind of interrogating her. Um, and her aunt asks her, so you didn't speak Faroese at all at home? Her voice was cautious, neutral. My mother and father spoke Faroese with each other. First I ate the rye bread. Then I let the refrigerated whale fat rest on my tongue. I wanted to say something about assimilation, that assimilation is a methodical loss of memory. I wanted to talk about parties, Christmas dinners, birthdays, the moment, if she knew it, when an aunt, a cousin, turned towards her and switched into Danish, the moment of becoming a guest in one's own family, a blood guest. Foreignness is inherited, I wanted to say. It's packed away for the next generation. Then I let it go. The blubber was like glue in my mouth, the taste juicy, a little milky, pink and salted. And our narrator really struggles with this notion of being both Faroese and Danish, and also at the same time, neither, of being in some ways a foreigner to both Denmark and the Faroe Islands. And she even sort of resents her mother in a lot of ways, um, because when they go back to the Faroe Islands, her mother seems to integrate well back into their culture, but our unnamed narrator doesn't feel like she can do it. Her mother feels quite at home when they visit the Faroe Islands, but she doesn't. And we get this little passage that I just really like. My mother was born in Vordingborg. I was born at the Central Hospital in Copenhagen. People talk a lot about what home is, a state of mind, the people you meet, all that stuff. I thought it was bollocks. Something said by culturally displaced backpackers with a mouthful of earth, of meat, chewing and slurping their way through the world. Home is a toponym, I thought, a place name. And these sorts of questions like, what is home, are really interesting in the kind of grand scope and is explored very effectively, again, in this very, very short book. This book is only 150 or so pages, as it's on one hand a love letter to the Faroe Islands, and on the other hand, I guess as all good lo love letters are, a wistful longing for more of a connection. This book is really about immigration and exile and the search for home, but it's all wrapped up in this poetry that again is just powerful and, and beautiful, and the language itself is really what carries the weight of this book. It's the atmosphere that Jakobsen uh, cultivates. That is really what is so engrossing here. And again, the comparisons to uh, Jon Kalman Stefansson in Iceland are really, really apt because Jon Kalman does for Iceland um, kind of on a bit of a grander scale, just in terms of, of word count, um, what Jakobsen does for the Faroe Islands. I do promise I will review Jon Kalman's stuff um, at some point soon. I plan to reread 
much of his work uh, this coming winter. Island is working in a very long tradition of exploring the colonialist relationship between mainland Denmark and the Faroe Islands. And there are a lot of writers who effectively explore this connection through family histories, right? In, in that these families often bridge this divide and they use the family as a means to get at this colonialist relationship. Um, perhaps the most famous Faroe East author probably ever, um, is William Hainson, who does this a lot in many of his books, as well as um, Haven Brew in his wonderfully weird um, The Old Man and His Sons. And this isn't to take anything away from the originality of Jakobsen's island, but to showcase that a lot of migrant families and immigrant families are torn between these two cultures, the, the Faroes and and Denmark. And I mean, this book, Island, is written in Danish, not Faroese. And the books that I just mentioned, um, Haven Brew writes in Faroese, but the probably much more famous, especially outside of the Faroe Islands, William Hainsen, who again is probably the most famous Faroese author um, of the 20th century, if not all time, he also writes in Danish. So both of these works, William Hainsen's stuff and uh, Jakobsen's, they kind of by their own showcase this split between these two cultures as they're both very much often writing about the Faroe Islands, but they're writing about it in Danish, in the colonialist language. And of course, there is a really biographical reading that one could, I think, very easily do of, of Jakobsen's Island. Um, I'll link to an article below where she talks about her own struggles with this, as again, she is a Faroe East Danish author, but she spent most of her life, and I, I believe still continues to spend most of her life, in Denmark on the on the continent. I really enjoyed this book quite a bit. I, I do like very subtle, quiet, and atmospheric books, so I should warn uh, people that if you're much more interested in character and plot, while there is good characters and, and good plot that I kind of just skimmed over in this review, there is a lot of stuff about living uh, both on the Faroe Islands and uh, in Denmark during World War II, for example. This book is much more an atmospheric book rather than a plot driven book. Again, there is plot, but for me, what really holds this book together, what really drives the force of this book is the poetry of the language. So let me know if you've read this book or really any Faroe East literature. I'm always interested to read more Faroe East literature. I'm always looking for more uh, Faroe East literature. I had in my mind at one point to, to study the language quite closely, because again, it's very close to Icelandic and therefore close to Old Norse. But I think that's probably a project for the future. For now, thanks for watching.